Oh, hello. This is Tak Chong from Walk with Tak, and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and share. In this video, I would like to show you a dish that I have never cooked before. Uh, you can call it a new invention. It is a dish that allows you to cook salmon anytime you want. Uh, this dish is a prime example of my fast cooking system uh, with flavor chasing, advanced prepping, stir frying, and template based cooking. And with these four attributes, it allows me to make home cooking as part of my daily routines. And based on the ingredients that are available to me, as well as what I am looking for in terms of the flavor of the dish. And consequently, this dish is a good demonstration how I apply each of the four principles of my fast cooking system. And that allow me to make home cooking fun, practical, efficient, and most importantly, it's being creative. Uh, this dish is a vegetable medley with five different kinds of vegetables, which include eggplants, king oyster mushroom, baby bok choy, tomatoes, and portobello mushroom. Uh, and then it is topped with Atlantic salmon. All of these ingredients are fresh whole ingredients. Uh, as I have mentioned earlier, I went to shop at Hmark uh, on Saturday. Uh, they have many different kinds of mushrooms. Uh, one kind is known as the King Oyster Mushroom. Uh, this mushroom originated from the Mediterranean, and uh, now they are being used all over the world. When compared to other mushrooms, uh, this mushroom has a very firm texture. Uh, before it is cooked, uh, it is relatively bland in flavor. However, once you cook them, they are rich in umami flavor, and their texture is very much meat-like. I really enjoy them, but I don't eat them often because they are not available in our local supermarket. I cut them into thin slices as part of my advanced prepping, and I will use them in different dishes to test out their property. And this is the advantage of advanced prepping. Allow me to take a single ingredient and try it out in different combinations. Uh, another ingredient I brought back from Hmark that I normally do not have uh, is some bok choy. Uh, this bok choy are medium in size. Uh, the part of the bok choy that we eat uh, is the stem of the bok choy. The bok choy that we normally buy at the local supermarket uh, tend to be bigger in size. Consequently, the stem are rather tough. The stem of the smaller bok choy tend to be more tender. Uh, to prep the bok choy, I first cut off the top of the leaves, and then I will split the stem into different portions, depending on the size of the stem. Uh, this bok choy has another variety, which is smaller, and it is frequently known as baby bok choy. I then wash this bok choy in a large colander. I usually rinse them about two to three times, because there's a tendency for a soil to be caught up between the stems. And if I do not wash them thoroughly, I find that the bok choy could taste sandy. Again, this bok choy is part of my advanced prepping, and I will use them in different dishes and try it with different combinations of other vegetables. This is definitely is the advantage of uh, advanced prepping, allow you to create various types of vegetable medley. And for this dish, I also found some eggplant in my advanced prepping. Uh, in addition to the oyster mushroom, adding some portobello mushroom to the dish would be fun. The last item I would like to add to this dish is some cherry tomatoes, and I have some in my prep as well. And next, I would like to say a little bit about how I cook the salmon this time. In the past, I often pan fry the salmon in whole pieces in the wok, and it usually takes about 8 to 12 minutes, depending on the thickness of the salmon. So I often uh, been thinking about what is a better way to cook the salmon that will reduce the amount of time. And so for this dish, I'm going to use 8 ounces of salmon. I decided to cut them down into 1 inch in thickness to facilitate the cooking speed. Okay, now I have everything ready uh, for me to cook. 
And the prepping for cooking this dish easy because I have all the vegetables ready. All I have to do is to find them in the refrigerator. And the only thing that I need to do is to cut up the salmon, which take me less than a minute. Uh, I'm going to cook this dish in my Cucina 14-inch stainless steel wok uh, by starting out with two tablespoons of canola oil. Uh, I'm going to first pan fry the salmon. It is important for the wok to be well seasoned, uh, otherwise the salmon will stick to the bottom of the wok. Uh, I'm going to use the spot seasoning method uh, to season the wok to create a non-stick cooked surface. Uh, this method is very simple but effective. I heat up the oil until it starts to smoke gently and then I turn down the heat and let the oil to smoke for another 15 seconds and this is the time when the wok is being seasoned. I use a pair of long handle tongs uh, to layer the pieces of the salmon on the flat surface of the wok. I lay the skin side of the salmon toward the bottom of the wok. Uh, this is important because I want to fry the skin uh, to create a crispy texture. Uh, this provides wonderful flavor to the skin. The frying will also drain the oil underneath the skin. Uh, at this point, I turn the heat to low or medium low. And because the wok is well seasoned, as you can see, uh, the salmon do not stick to the surface of the wok at all. I can move it readily uh, with my tongs. And next, I flip the salmon on to its side. And because the salmon is finely sliced, they were able to cook very quickly. Uh, there are more surface area for the heat to penetrate into the salmon. Uh, the reason that I decided to try this method is uh, because when I cook the salmon in a whole piece, it takes much longer. Uh, depending on the thickness of the salmon, it can take up to 15 minutes to pan fry the salmon. And quite often, uh, I undercook them. Uh, even when I use a meat thermometer, uh, some part of the salmon will be just right, but other part will be either overcooked or undercooked. And by using this method, it gives me much better control uh, in how much I want to cook them. Uh, since the salmon uh, will cut up into individual pieces, I can cook some pieces longer than others. Uh, this will allow me to cook all the salmon pieces as evenly as possible. Uh, I also noticed that uh, I have actually more oil in the wok than I start out. I attribute this oil come from the skin of the salmon. And I can only assume this must be the omega-3 fatty acid that is very good for us. Okay, now the salmon is ready and I'm going to cook the vegetable next. In fact, I'm going to use the oil to cook the vegetables. The first vegetable ingredients that I'm going to cook is some eggplant. Uh, this is the Japanese type eggplant which has an elongated shape. I prefer this variety uh, because their skin tends to be thinner. Uh, eggplant is really hungry for oil. They have this tremendous capacity for absorbing oil. As you can see here, as soon as I add the eggplant, uh, the wok almost completely devoid of oil after I stir frying the eggplant in it just for a few seconds. The oil infiltrates into the eggplant readily and this is what makes eggplant taste great. Uh, you notice that the wok starts to smoke because by lacking of oil, uh, the eggplant starts to get burned. So I add some additional oil to the eggplant. The next ingredient I'm going to add is the oyster mushroom. Uh, here is a demonstration of sequential stir frying. As you see here, I add ingredients to the wok that will take longer time to cook. And in this case, both the eggplant and the oyster mushroom fit into this category. And next, I add about 5 cups of bok choy that's already been prepped in advance. Now you notice that when I first add the bok choy, the wok looks really full. Uh, this might look like there's a lot of vegetables in the wok, but don't worry because they all will cook down. And this is why for stir frying, it is good to have a large wok, and a 14-inch wok definitely is preferable. 
So right now, all I have to do is to stir fry the contents and to cook them down as much as possible. And by coating all the food ingredients with the hot oil, uh, it will promote the Mela reaction, uh, which at a hot oil temperature between 250 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit uh, will promote the formation of flavor molecule on the surface of the food ingredients. At this point, if you feel that there's not enough oil in coating all the ingredients, you can always add a little bit more. So the next ingredient I'm going to add is some portobello mushroom. And you probably guess that why I add the portobello mushroom now are because I do not want to cook the portobello mushroom too much. Again, this is part of the sequential cooking approach. Uh, you add the item that you want to cook least uh, toward the end of the cooking process. Uh, the next step is to add some water and to steam the vegetables. Uh, whether this step is necessary depending on how soft you want the vegetables. However, I will always suggest that don't add too much water. You do not want to flood the bottom of the wok with water. Uh, the goal is to have just barely enough water at the bottom of the wok uh, to create a steam in cooking the vegetables further. Again, you can decide how much water to add and how long you want to steam the vegetable uh, depend on how much you want them to be done. I'm going to season this vegetable with a combination of three sauces. Yeah. Oyster sauce, which I use about uh, two tablespoons, with an approximate one tablespoon of uh, hoisin sauce. And the final vegetable ingredients I'm going to add is some cherry tomatoes. As you notice that I add them toward the end because I do not want to cook them too much. Uh, finally, I'm going to season the dish with a fried chili in oil. I'm going to use about two teaspoons. Uh, this is a relatively mild chili sauce, but it gives great flavor yes. to the dish. As I told my wife yesterday, that this is probably one of the better dish that I have cooked recently. Uh, the combination of vegetables in this vegetable medley seems to be just perfect. Uh, the taste as well as the texture of the vegetables uh, in this dish uh, match each other supremely, uh, providing an exceptional culinary experience. In fact, as I am editing this video, looking at all these pictures, I cannot stop myself salivating. Uh, finally, I top this vegetable medley uh, with the salmon that I've cooked earlier. Uh, the salmon turns out to be perfectly cooked as well. Uh, this dish turned out to be perfect for our dinner uh, with five different kinds of vegetables that include eggplant, bok choy, two kinds of mushroom, and tomatoes. Well, this was our dinner last night. It provided a demonstration of how I use my fast cooking system to explore different food ingredients and also to try different combinations. Uh, to show you how you can make your home cooking fun, interesting, and most importantly, sustainable. And thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more as well as to adopt my fast cooking system, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post a video each day uh, to help you make home cooking to become part of your daily routine. So keep on cooking. I will see you tomorrow.